to all our parishioners and visitors as we gather for today's celebration. Today is the second Sunday of Easter and Divine Mercy Sunday. Our priest celebrant this morning is Father Ignazi. Join us to celebrate the Feast of Divine Mercy in the church this Sunday afternoon, April 7th, from 2.45 to 3.45 p.m. Discover the extraordinary grace of Divine Mercy Sunday. Let's come together for one hour of prayer and silent meditation before the Blessed Sacrament. This Sunday, today, at 2.45 to 3.45. There will also be a first-class relic of Sister Faustina to, to venerate. You can learn more from our bulletin and on our website. Don't miss out on this year's Pass the Torch. We have a sm short video for you. Hello, St. Augustine's Parish, School and Community. My name is Martha Bingham. I am a St. Augustine school parent and the chair of the Pass the Torch fundraising committee. For those of you that are new to the community, the Pass the Torch event is an annual fundraising gala for over 400 guests in a beautifully decorated venue, hosting a formal dinner with live music and dancing. And this is a much sought after event that brings together the entire community. We are raising funds to complete our school building project, focusing currently on the third and final phase and this includes replacing the school gymnasium, playground, and other amenities. Though equally important is our community, our connections to each other. It's one of the things that makes St. Augustine so special, and the Pass the Torch Gala is a great way to rekindle those connections. The gala is in three weeks, on Saturday, April 27th, coming up really soon. And this is the last weekend that you can buy your tickets. The deadline for ticket sales is this Wednesday on April 10th. It's an adult-only event, and you can buy your tickets on our website at PassTheTorchGala.com. We've had many inquiries about what to wear. This year's theme is Moonlight Masquerade, and we recommend formal attire. Masks are optional, and we can't wait to see you in your gorgeous gowns, playful masks, and dapper suits at the gala. So hurry and buy your tickets before a deadline on April 10th. Thank you so much for your support, and look forward to seeing you at the gala. So there are no strangers in God's house? Let us turn and greet one another. And we remind you to please ensure that all cell phones and electronic devices are turned off. And now, as we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries, please take a moment to recollect in silence. After we sing the opening antiphon, please join us in our procession of heaven today, which is that Easter day when the joy was bright. Number 392 in the emblem.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Welcome, all of you, as we continue this Easter joy. Today we have an account in a gospel when Jesus comes to the disciples, gives them peace, but also confers on them his divine power to forgive sins. And the forgiveness is still available to us through the sacraments. But as we experience and receive the forgiveness of God, we are also called to, to forgive others. Let us at the beginning call to mind our sins, failures, including the times when we, when we are holding that forgiveness and we are not willing to grant or not able to grant. And let us ask God for grace, for forgiveness, but also for the grace to, to be able to forgive and experience that peace too. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. our prayers intentions, I offer this Mass in a special intention for Kim and family. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, and by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. And before we have the reading, children, dear children, please come forward. <laughs> children for the liturgy, where are you? Please come. Come, come to the front. Oh, JT. Okay, be careful. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies for the Spirit is the truth. The Word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. It was evening on the day Jesus rose from the dead, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I sent you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his sight, I will not believe. After eight days, the, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors, the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my sight. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life 
in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. We all find it difficult to forgive. When someone has hurt us, it can take a while to get over the feelings of betrayal and pain. Even when the person who has hurt us asks for forgiveness, lingering feelings of resentment can make it difficult for us to repair the relationships. It is much more difficult for us to offer forgiveness to others before they apologize. It takes an incredible amount of love to reach out to those who hurt us and repair the relationships even before they show the slightest sign of remorse. Taking the initiative to forgive even before the person who has offended us apologizes is a sure sign of true, unconditional love. So it should not surprise us then that it is just such love that the Lord shows after he is raised from the dead. Though his disciples abandoned him on Good Friday, Jesus did not sit around waiting for them to come to him to say how sorry they were. He didn't stay at the empty tomb with his armed cross, demanding that they show some sign of remorse. But rather, he sought them out. He went out to them in the place where they were hiding. Though they were still full of fear and could not make sense of Jesus' death and resurrection, he appeared to them offering the gift of peace and restoring their joy. The risen Lord's love for his disciples is so strong that he will not allow their fears or failures to put an unbreachable wall between them. The mercy that Jesus extends to his disciples does not stop there. We are all familiar with the story of Thomas, we just heard in the Gospel, uh, who doubted the resurrection. Jesus treats him no differently than the others. He doesn't wait until Thomas gets over his doubt, swallows his pride and apologizes. But rather Jesus appears him and appears again and accepts his challenge to put his fingers into his hands and sight. Jesus takes the initiative in repairing his relationship with Thomas not allowing his doubt to keep him from experiencing the joy and peace of Christ's victory over death. Brothers and sisters, the same is true for us. Jesus is always reaching out to us with the gift of forgiveness and mercy. Before we realize how great our sin is, he is already stirring our hearts to turn back to him. In fact, the desire to repent is itself a gift from God. We cannot turn away from our sins and ask forgiveness unless God gives us the grace to do so. It might seem to us from our perspective on earth that we are the ones who realize our failures and take the initiative to repair a relationship with our Heavenly Father. But in reality, it is God already moving our spirit to seek reconciliation with Him. Therefore, we should be always asking for the grace of repentance. We should ask God to show us our sinful thoughts, attitudes, and actions so that we can abandon them. 
In particular, we should ask God for the power to detest our sinfulness, not only out of the fear of punishment, but out of love for him. The feast that we celebrate today, Divine Mercy Sunday, is another example of how Jesus takes the initiative in reaching out to sinners. During this Mass, we have the, of course, image of Divine Mercy, but also we have the relics of St. Faustina there above her image. Between 1931 and 1938, our Lord appeared to St. Faustina, a Polish nun, to reveal to her his desire to have the first Sunday after Easter dedicated to his divine mercy. This is what Jesus said to St. Faustina. The Feast of Mercy emerged from the very depths of tenderness. It is my desire that it solemnly be celebrated on the first Sunday after Easter. Humankind will not have peace until it turns to the fount of my mercy. Furthermore, Jesus promised St. Faustina that anyone who goes to confession and receives communion during this time will receive complete forgiveness of sins and the punishment due to sin. Our Lord said, On that day, the very depths of my tender mercy are open. I pour out the whole ocean of graces upon the souls who approach the fount of my mercy. The soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. On that day, all the divine floodgates through which grace flow are open. Jesus extends this promise to all sinners, no matter how hardened their hearts might be. Through this great feast, he opens his arms wide to all people, taking the initiative in offering them forgiveness. He goes on to say to tell St. Faustina, let no soul fear to draw near to me, even though its sins be as scarlet. My mercy is so great that no mind, be it of man or of angel, will be able to fathom it throughout all eternity. If you have been keeping your distance from God because you are carrying a burden of guilt or shame, this is the day to turn to Jesus. You will, have, you will experience and have compassion, and you will find in him that compassion and be a relief of the weight you are carrying. If you find yourself, yourself unable to overcome your doubts, this is the day when we can come to Jesus and ask Jesus to reveal himself to you as he did to Thomas. You will find the light to open your mind to the truth. If your heart is hardened from regrets and re re resentments, this is the day to turn to Jesus. He can walk through any wall, including the hardest of human hearts, and give you the power to forgive and feel joy again. If you are being, being held back by your fears, this is the day to turn to Jesus. He will give you an abundant faith to help you overcome your fears. Sisters and brothers, the risen Lord reached out to the disciples who denied and abandoned him to bring them peace. He took the initiative in restoring his relationship with Thomas, who could not overcome his doubts. We can be sure that he will do the same with us. This Feast of Divine Mercy is the greatest time for repentance and reconciliation with our Heavenly Father. Let's take full advantage of it, receiving the peace that comes from turning away from sin and embracing our full identity as sons and daughters of God. Once we have received it, let us then share that mercy with others by forgiving them so that God can restore the whole world to fellowship and peace.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. Let us bring our prayers before the Lord, who knows our every need. That the Church may continue to grow in charity and faith as she remains a sign of God's merciful love for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, help me. That the Lord may look favorably upon and provide the resources for the needs of individuals and communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have been separated from God by sin may experience forgiveness and healing through the sacrament of reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who suffer in any way, may the peace of Christ beyond all understanding bring them healing and hope. We pray especially for Dan Gleason, John Woods, Blaine MacDonald, Melva Strudwick, Tinawati Tanuji, Hang Fun Leong, Patricia Connor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. That the faithful departed may be welcomed into the kingdom of heaven and see the face of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. That all of us gathered here may be guided by the Holy Spirit in our work to build up the kingdom of God on earth by our words and actions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, help us. Let us have a special intention during this Mass for Kim and family. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, you send your Son not to condemn the world, but to save it. We ask you to hear the prayers we offer for ourselves and for the needs of the world, through Christ our Lord.
sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain an ending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation to add at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed, Holy Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with Blessed Apostles, with St. Augustine, St. Eugene, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Let us now turn to our merciful Father and pray the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing, continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Please take the parish bulletin sittings going on. Just the two things to point out. First is the, this coming Wednesday is the deadline for purchasing the tickets for the gala. As, uh, those of you, the families who joined our parish in the last while, uh, we fundraised for the completion of our school. We still have the gym to build, and, and it's, it's going every year, and we have done as a community tremendous effort, and, and uh, that effort is, uh, of course, like both school and, and, the, and the parish, the whole community. Uh, so this gala is to support the building and the completing this project. And so it's a wonderful event, uh, a great, you know, Greek food, you cannot go wrong with the Greek food. It's lovely. Maybe it's as, as far as we can get the taste of Greek at this time. And Greece, and uh, yeah, so the, the deadline is Wednesday. So there are parents at the back of the church. If you have any questions or so, they can help you there uh, and join us for that great event. And another thing is uh, what was announced before. As I mentioned, we have the relics of Sister St. Faustina today. Uh, we have a 45 minutes adoration this afternoon, starting quarter to three until 3.30. And three o'clock we have a chaplet of divine mercy, is the, the, the time when Jesus died. And we have some silent adoration and 3.30 benediction. So if you would like to come for a bit for the, to spend time with Jesus this afternoon, quarter to three until 3.30. Great to have you all. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Masses and that go in peace. I have a blessed week, everyone. Please join our recessional. Him today, good Christians all rejoice and sing.